Okay, so this next video is going to talk about how we break and form macromolecules. And so you know at this point, micro is tiny, macro is big. So we're going to talk about how these big macromolecules in our systems are either broken or formed. So um, here we go. Macromolecules are going to be those large um, big, big, big molecules made of similar subunits, okay? So another word that we can use is polymers. Poly means many, right? And polymers are going to be made from something called monomers. And a bunch of monomers are going to come together and form a polymer, okay? They're going to have a covalent bond between them. So the way that this is going to look, I'm going to draw this for you, um, is going to be pretty much consistent no matter what we're talking about. So um, as far as this goes, you're going to have, oops, there we go. You're going to have a monomer connected to another monomer, connected to another monomer, and so on. And then at one end, you'll have an OH coming off, and at the other end, you're going to have an H. Okay. So the four types of macromolecules that are going to, most of them are going to have this, is going to be um, proteins, uh, nucleic acids, carbohydrates, and then fats are a little bit different, okay? But they're all going to have this. So I, it's like a long beaded necklace is how you can think of it, right? Now, the important part is how do these break and how do these form, right? That's really important to think about. So um, I like to think about it if you want to talk about them breaking apart. We, I can give you an example. Let's say that you go out tonight and you have a big juicy steak for dinner. That sounds delicious right now, right? Now, if you think about a steak, a steak is made of protein. Protein is going to be composed of these little monomer subunits all joined together, okay? So protein is a big molecule. So these monomers are going to be amino acids. You've probably heard of those before. Amino acids are gonna be the building blocks of a protein. Now let's say that we want to break this protein apart so we can build muscle, right? So we're eating it, enzymes are going to come in, and they're going to want to break it down to its building blocks because we can't just take that steak and put it right on our muscle. We need to actually break it down into its building blocks and then rebuild, okay? So what's going to happen in this situation is an enzyme is going to come in, and the enzyme is going to add water, and what's going to happen is that water is going to come in and it's going to break this bond. So eventually it's going to look like this, like that, and then over here like that. So you can see that we used water. I apologize, my dogs are going to start um, playing with each other right now and it's going to get noisy. Sorry. Okay, so we've got um, a water molecule that we've added to this to break this molecule apart, right? So the name of this process is going to be called a dehydration. Oops, I'm so sorry. I am totally ahead of myself. It is called hydrolysis. I'm thinking ahead to the next part. Okay, hydrolysis. Let's take this word apart and see what it means. Hydro is talking about water. Lysis means to break apart. That's exactly what we did. We added a water molecule to break the molecules apart, right? So that's called hydrolysis. Now, let's say we've done that. We have the building blocks all separate in our gut. Now we want to start making proteins to put where our muscle tissue is. Then what we can do is something called a dehydration synthesis. And that's going to work in the opposite way. So if I was going to redraw what we had down there before, it looked like this. Okay, so what's going to happen in a dehydration synthesis is we want all four of these circles to be one big long chain. We don't want this stuff in, in the between. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that water out. If you look, there's an H, H, and an O, H2O. And so we've got our H2O that comes out, and now our molecule is going to look like this. And that is going to be called a dehydration synthesis. Now let's look at what that means. 
Dehydration, removing water. That's exactly what we just did. Synthesis, putting things together, right? And that's exactly what we just did in this, okay? So that's going to be how we break or form macromolecules. Now, on my PowerPoint, I've got a picture of these as well, somewhere in here, let's see. Yeah, okay, let me make that a little bit smaller so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Okay, so if you look here, we've got um, a little polymer here and then a monomer that we want to link onto it. So we're taking a water molecule out and then we can form a new bond. That's going to be our dehydration synthesis. In the next one, that's going to be the opposite, where we're trying to break this long molecule apart. And what we're going to do is we're going to add water to it and that's going to break it apart. Here's our water components. Now we've got this little polymer, but a piece has come off, and that's called a hydrolysis, okay? That's a really, really important concept to understand because that's gonna come up over and over again, okay? So when would this happen? Like I said, if you were to eat a big steak and you were trying to build muscle, that would be a perfect example. Um, and so people often ask, well, what happens to the water that you take out? Well, some of it gets reused for this whole process, but that also is a reason why we urinate, right? So think about it. The next time you pee, you can think about Bio 111 and how all these processes are happening. You're welcome. I mean, I ruin everything for you. Even salt now, you probably can't look the same way because you'll think of an ionic bond. You're welcome. No one's going to invite you to do anything anymore because you're going to be saying this to everyone. Okay. So that's going to be dehydration, synthesis, and hydrolysis. So what's going to make this happen are going to be enzymes. Enzymes are going to help that process to happen. And we'll go over this a little bit more in class as well. Now in the next video, we're going to start talking about the different types of macromolecules. There's four of them, proteins, nucleic acids, lipids, and carbohydrates.